Hey there, welcome back to Spyro. Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. Uh, last time we started working our way through Summer Forest, we managed to go handle most of Glimmer, aside from the second lamp challenge. I hate backtracking. We did Colossus and Idle Springs, and now we're going to be polishing off Huracos, Sunny Beach, Aquaria Towers, and the Crush fight. Also, last time we did uh, Ocean Speedway. It was fun. But yeah, let's just get into it. God, those guys creeped me the hell out back in the original. I really like Huracos. I like how they change it from a endless void to it being an island. We've always had trouble with the gear grinders, but now they've set up. Uh, these electrals were voiced by Tom Kenny, both in this and the original. But in the original, boy, they sounded a lot more like SpongeBob. You can really tell he had to change up his performance for it, because that's not a voice you just throw around now. Not when you're a professional. I remember seeing a lot of did you knows for um, these two enemies right here. The big orange wrench wielding guy and his robot companion. And how like they would always say that those were meant to be like references or something to the planned upcoming uh, Ratchet and Clank and I never bought into that just because it seems like a big stretch like I don't know how far actually I do know how far ahead they were thinking Ratchet and Clank started off as just girl with stick so they wouldn't have been thinking about those designs by the time they were working on Spyro 2 because they had an entire other game they had to worry about after this before they moved on to girl with stick which would then get abandoned for Ratchet and Clank. So I think those enemies are just a fun coincidence. I think these kinds of gates being locked behind the electrode would be a good challenge to include in a future Spyro game if it was not, you know, the beaten intended path. If finding them and using them to unlock side areas was the challenge, that'd be a really fun addition to a game like this. Should have held off. Reward. 
very straightforward level, but I say it makes up for it because the challenges they have for this one make use of, like, the geometry they built in with the, you know, the rotating fans, propellers, whatever they're supposed to be. And also the side challenge with the, um, the lightning stones. Which, again, those purple gear grinders scared the hell out of me as a kid. It was the laugh. Okay, these two supercharges always give me a hard time. Okay, not that one so much. That one. The, uh, the one that actually leads up to the path. That always gives me a hard time. Hey, got it in one. See that big building over there? The gear grinders are using it to steal our electricity. Please help us by shutting down the machinery inside. I don't think I've missed anything on the lower floors. Much like with uh, the walkway in Colossus, I always felt like there should be something over here. It just feels like a weird inclusion that it's there with nothing. Spyro, you have done well so far. You could have this little trinket for good luck. If you have any questions about shutting down the factory, just ask me. Don't have any, but thanks. The next glides get tricky. You'll have to use your hover maneuver to make them. Press the action button during a glide to hover and get extra height. Sure is weird that um, all of these creatures without wings are experts in the hover maneuver. Yeah, I guess I, I will say I've ragged on a lot of um, needless backtracking. I think this is clever backtracking. The fact that the level has this hidden upper area that you wouldn't notice on your first way through, and that it's tied to a side challenge, I think that's really good. Even if it is technically backtracking through the level. It's not. Shutting down the factory. Here, I found this stuck between the gears. You can have it if you want. Yeah, if you want. Not like I'm gonna do anything with it. So this is gonna sound really stupid, but when the remake came out, I saw that these little um well, I don't know what to call them, prongs or whatever. They're the same thing as for the um the lightning stone challenge. And I thought that they had added in a secret where if you brought some lightning stones over here, you could like open up a hidden path or whatever. That was not the case. And in fact, it probably is a good thing because it would have been annoying to bring the four or five lightning stones all the way over here. I am of two minds when it comes to adding secrets like that into a remake. Because on the one hand, you should want to give like, the really hardcore fans who know everything a little something extra. But on the other hand, like, you don't want to go too far into that because you run the risk of it feeling like a different game. 
replace them all and activate our generator, I'd be very <clears throat> grateful. Hey, this challenge is a tad annoying. But fortunately, it's not scary anymore. I will say this is my big criticism of Reignited, and I'm probably going to bring it up every time. Sound design just isn't as strong as the original for in a lot of areas. And the laughs of the gear grinders falls into that category. See you over here. Um Going back to Secrets Hidden in Remakes, I really like Shadow of the Colossus. A lot of people do, it's fantastic. And um, the remake of that added in a delightfully painful secret to find with the 79 Enlightenments, I believe they were called. Basically just coins hidden throughout the Forbidden Lands. And getting all of those was a pain, but I feel like it was worth it for the secret. And it, it took me like multiple playthroughs just because I had to be able to get enough stamina to get to the top of the Shrine of Worship to get some of those. Like there's one right near the entrance of the Forbidden Lands, so you gotta climb all the way up to the top of the shrine and then walk all the way halfway across the map just for one coin there we go but i feel like that secret is fantastic i feel like because the forbidden lands are so big the fact that there's nothing there to really find the addition of having something is a really strong idea even if it's not much and also i thought back when I first played the remake that oh, finding all of those is going to be such a pain in the ass, it's, there's no way it's worth it, so I just looked up a video on YouTube and even though the reward is so minuscule, I still thought, ah, oh, but that's really cool and I just want to experience that for myself. So I ended up doing it anyway. And I really wish I knew what Dorman was saying in that scene. But yeah, I think that there are some instances where you can get away with adding just a little something to a remake for the hardcores. And I really wish there was something in Reignited. Spyro, it's a good thing you're here. If you can help shepherd those baby turtles over there to safety, I'd be mighty grateful. I remember really liking this level as a kid, and I'm not entirely sure why. I wouldn't call it one of my favorites in this game, but I don't know, I think it's just the atmosphere. I also remember in the challenge where I blow open all those crates with the turtles trapped in them, I remember trying to go through one by one and figure out just how many baby turtles there were in this level, because it feels like there's a bunch. 
I also didn't understand what was the difference between, you know, the baby turtles that would in all likelihood grow into these adult talking turtles, but then also just having these turtles that don't seem to be, you know, people for lack of a better word. Sapient. Oh, I hit a starfish. And I love this room in the remake. Uh, in the original, I believe it was just a closed off cavern, but making it actually open, uh, it just fits with the level theme. Minor change, but a good one. More ladders for arbitrary backtracking, that's a shame. And these little tiki idols are fantastic. I mean it when I say you just cannot compliment the art team enough for this game. Sorry, guy. The water workers have captured most of our baby turtles, and the boxes they put them in are incredibly strong. With a more powerful flame attack, maybe you could break open the boxes and release them. Eh, maybe. I thought that electric projectile ran along the floor and I'd be able to jump over it. Sorry, guy. Okay, now this is a bit annoying. I've never liked that this, this guy is so far from the button. And also in the original, you could just flame them continuously to make sure he kept moving. But in this game, if you keep flaming him, he'll do that little hop emotion, be er, motion because, you know, he just got attacked, and that just slows him down further. So you have to wait for him to get disinterested before you get his attention back. And now the nightmare of babysitting is over. ladder who wants to make soup out of our turtles maybe you could climb up there and stop him i could in theory if i had that ability so in glimmer when i complain about the backtracking for a mini game that i've already played and that it's annoying that still stands to a mini game i haven't played but it's a bit more bearable i guess Ultimately, I'd still rather have exploration, you know, be something I have to come back and figure out rather than just a minigame, but it's slightly better here, because that turtle challenge is one of a kind. Also, it's just funny to think about the Shredder being at the top of the ladder, making his turtle suit. I always forget that that gem is there.
boy, I remember having a devil of a time trying to carry this super flame all the way back to the start of the level. And it's really not that hard in retrospect, but just, you know, when you're a kid and having a timer is stressful no matter what. But there you go. Most impressive. Please take this sacred thingamajig as a token of our everlasting gratitude. Uh, just a random thingamajig as a token of everlasting gratitude. I don't feel like it's a big ask for, you know, people to treat the in-game rewards as rewards like they ought to be. But, they really wanted to commit to the joke of nobody knowing what an orb is. And I believe that's everything I can get here right now. So off to Aquaria Towers, the level that actually gave me nightmares as a kid. Yay. It occurs to me that there is a greater than 0% chance of me doing an entire recording session with crumbs in my beard. I hope that doesn't happen, but it's possible. What a dick. Looking guys with the shock sticks have drained all our water. We can't get it back unless someone activates the switches they're guarding. This level might have contributed to me having a bit of a phobia of the deep sea. And I know that's weird, it's not like I ever had any, you know, grand ambitions of being a diver or anything. But th this level just made it uncomfortable enough for me. Oh, oh geez, come on. I tried to light that seaweed on fire, even though I didn't have a super flame. Oh, sorry sheep. And these are the guys that scared the hell out of me as a kid. Could not handle them. Yeah, that's definitely one of those things I needed my dad's help with because I was too scared to deal with it. Walking along the wall, the roof feels weird. I get we're underwater, but are crabs really that buoyant? Hi, Spyro. You must be tougher than you look to get here. All the same, you won't be able to get past the metal sharks up ahead. I suppose I could let you borrow my submarine, though, for a modest fee, of course. 
This one is so bunk. Because you get rid of those sharks super quick. And then you don't need the submarine ever again. Again, we all want you to have this talisman of Aquaria Towers to remember us by. All right, let's go deal with some sharks. They don't frighten me anymore. They don't. They don't. Can I get this last bit of seaweed before? Oh, was it? Is there not a seaweed in this trench? Huh. I could have sworn. Also, there's gems up here and I always forget about it. Is it in this one? Is this the seaweed I was thinking of? No, just entirely mistaken. And that does it for the sharks. And it really highlights just how bunk the paying money bags that time was. I mean, paying money bags is always bunk, but still. Now, why didn't the water from up here simply drain into that main area? is up here. Yes! Ugh, just barely. I recognize like the seaweed and the Huracos windmills and all of that stuff as skill point fodder because in the PS1, like, you really couldn't dedicate the polygons to a lot of useless set dressing. So pretty much everything was intentional. And, you know, those things just stick out like a sore thumb. 
like a in animation you can always tell what's part of the background and what's a cell that isn't going to be interactable and so I'm really curious how a future Spyro game might handle those kinds of hidden skill points because you can prop the level or not you can fill the level with so many props that it would be really difficult to fully gauge what is just a prop and what is there for a skill point I've been trying to tame my new pet man array but he just won't obey me hey you're just about the right size to ride on his back. Great! Hop on his back and guide him through each of the bubble rings as they appear. And remember, he's brand new, so try not to get him dented or scratched up. Oh! I gave up on that last gem because I thought it was going to be one of the towers. I didn't think I would just swim right past it. Here, take this orb. I found it in one of my flippers. Now that the manta ray's tamed, I'd love to get him into racing shape. Care to take him through a harder course? Okay, good luck. Easy. Incredible. You've got real talent. I could use a partner like you. You can have the orb I found in my other flipper, too. Okay. Let's do the towers. The water workers have kidnapped six of my children and have hidden them in the top of each of these numbered towers. I borrowed some explosives to blast open the tower doors. If you can make it to the top of the six numbered towers, my children will be safe. There you go. Um, some of these towers really give me a hard time with the, uh, multiple electric fields you gotta pass. And there's momentum on your swimming charge, so it's hard to stop in time. Also, I wanted to make this reference but I was busy talking about something else. I chose the impossible. Oh, this one's just a crap. Easy. So in the last episode I talked about being a dumb kid, trying to hold my breath in time with Spyro being underwater. Pretty sure this is the level that convinced me how stupid that was. You know, eventually, once I got to the end of it. I don't need to do that, but I wanted to. 
Sorry, sheep. I'm getting more careless around the fodder, but it's just because I'm underwater. Darn you, money bags. Okay, now this is a really good one with a moving electric field. I mean, it's not that effective at keeping me out, but I like it. we can swim in peace. I heard that you're collecting orbs. Please, take this one. That counts. I heard you want these for some reason. Here's, here's another for your collection. That counts as him treating it as a reward. I think we're up to two NPCs who treat it like a reward. That was the one. I, yes. I was not paying attention. I was so excited about somebody actually treating it like it was valuable. Alright, let's go. Well done, Spyro. Now that you have six talismans, this door will open. Okay, Spyro. Jump through that hole in the floor to get down to Crush's dungeon. I'll help you by tossing sheep through the hole, if I can catch them. Good luck. Eh, just speak their goat language and you'll be fine. <laughs> Before you get to the castle dungeon, Spyro, I thought that you might want to know how Ripto and his monsters arrived in Avalar. You see, last week in the Winter Tundra, the Professor was working on some new super portal technology. There! That's the last orb in place. Now let's see. All we need are some coordinates. Yeah? How about 22475? <laughs> That's my birthday. No, Hunter, don't! What? Dragons? Wonderful! That's a powerful sniffer if you can figure out there's no dragons in the entire realm. Say hello to your new king. Professor, shut it down! Hurry! Oh my, oh my! I can't see the switch! I think I've broken my glasses! Crush! Go through the portal, you idiot! Tell all your friends to take the orbs and scatter them throughout Avalar. Quickly! Now! Go! Crush! Get the orbs now! Now! You despicable little creature! I'll kill you! This is bad news for Avalar. Hunter, why didn't you chase him? Uh, yeah. I, uh, would have gone after him, but didn't he say something about not liking dragons? Professor, could we catch a dragon to help us? Yes, yes, I think so. We'll need a world that has an alignment much better suited to intercepting one of these creatures. How about Glimmer? Ripto must be a real lightweight if a fairy can carry him. I really like that they changed Crush's dungeon's um, lighting to be green. Like in the original, those were uh, acid waterfalls, or lava waterfalls, and now they're acid. And I think it looks really good. Green is not a lighting choice you see a lot. I think they did good with this.
And they nailed Crush's redesign. I like that he's a lot more hunched now. So in the original, he would just eventually try to hit you, but now, and you could just charge around and wait for that, but now he has to be close to you before he does it, so you kind of just have to walk away from him. That's pretty lame. You know, it's not a chase if you're just casually meandering away. There you go. Easy peasy. Oh, you may have been able to defeat that simpleton, but golf will be more than a match for you. Bring it on, Shorty. Go, come here now. Destroy him and make sure it's painful. <laughs> I like the idea that Crush just kept smacking the floor, causing the roof to cave in multiple times, and that's not a big deal. But now that Gulp broke a door, well that was a load-bearing door, so now the ceiling is collapsing for real. That Ripto has caused enough damage. All his meddling has cost me a fortune. If it wasn't for Spyro, I'd be bankrupt. Oh, if Ripto were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind. In fact, I'd give him a lot more than that. I Gulf can be really quiet when he wants to be. University, and I still know a few moves. Take that! And that! No! I've always loved Gulp, and I don't know why. His boss fight absolutely kicked my ass as a kid, but I've always loved him. And his design is fantastic. Normally I'd call it here, but I've got a lot of time I can spare for my recording. So I'm going to polish off Autumn Plains, which is my favorite homeworld. I love the atmosphere here. And after I learn to climb, I'm going to go back and polish off some of that backtracking I was complaining about. Autumn is my favorite season, so it's no surprise that this is my favorite of the homeworlds. And we got to pay the scalper. Legend has it that there is a portal to Zephyr here. And legend also has it that I know how to activate it. Furthermore, as I recall, the legend mentioned something about me activating it for a, a small fee. Thanks I hate you, you crook. Spyro. With all this cash, I can open a lizard burger shop in Skelos Badlands. Done, Spyro. The power from your orbs has activated the whirlwind. Thank you.
I love her. Let's have it. I bet a rich dragon like you wouldn't mind cashing in a few gems to learn how to climb. I'd be willing to teach you for, say, oh, I don't know, a small. <sighs> you won't regret it. Okay, when you see a wall surface that looks climbable, like the one to my left here, just jump onto it and you will grab it with your claws. Use the left stick to move up and down. Press the jump button again to leap off. You could also jump sideways onto another climbable area. Yeah, this guy. Sorry for the awkward cut in the recording. Had to plug in my laptop. I do not want to lose this capture. I, wow. I don't know what that was, but like my brain just did not even register that butterfly jar. I, I don't know what I thought I saw there, but I didn't think it was a butterfly jar. And I was just like, what the? But I think some orb power might unstick it. I see you've collected a good number of orbs there. Here we go again. You into the little castle over there in exchange for a few gems. What do you say? I love how he cut out the bullshit on that one. Like he just no goes right into it. Find a sucker. I, I mean, <clears throat> you're a shrewd customer, Spyro. I'm really not. I really just accept the base price with no haggling. That's a mechanic they should add into a new Spyro game haggling with money bags. It'll be like when you're at the shop in Star Fox Adventures. And, you know, you try to go too low, and no, no, that's too low. And then you keep trying that, and he kicks you out of the shop. I would love to let you enter this speedway free of charge, Spyro. Love to. Unfortunately, the speedway rules require me to charge a, a small fee. You've chosen wisely. I bet a quick dragon like you will win your money back in no time. Okay, but like actually the 100 gems for a speedway isn't that big of a price tag. You earn four times that. Anything down here? No. Now this is something that I just absolutely adored. Getting to the highest peak in Autumn Plains and then... You don't really hear it in the remake again, it's the sound design is a bit inferior, but like... The really intense wind that's rustling up here and getting to look out of the level... I, just this spot is what made it probably my favorite homeworld and definitely in Spyro 2, maybe in the series? Well. That's not fair. I really like the homeworlds in Spyro 1 because they're also actual levels with, you know, enemies and dragons to free and yada yada. But I really love this area. Also, I love the touch of the floating uh, rocks. They don't seem like they're full on islands, but it, it's, it's a fantastic skybox. I can't compliment how they handled this level enough. 
It's the definitely the one I was most excited to see in the remake. Also, there was a time back when I was doing scripted videos and I thought I'd be able to do those more regularly that I wanted to talk about a hypothetical Spyro team racing and some levels that I would adapt into the tracks. And I really wanted to, you know, theorycraft an idea for an Autumn Plains raceway where you would start in Gulp's Overlook and you would worm your way up the castle and eventually you would be going along this wall. And then, you know, back down again. Yeah, it's just such a great level. How did I miss that? Wait, that doesn't seem like it's along the wall. Oh. Tall grass. There you go. Now back to Summer Forest. Okay, first things first, let's get this stuff in the home world. Maybe. Speaking of rooms they made really pretty. I love the, uh, it's not quite stained glass, but whatever you would call that glass. And that tree is amazing. I, I don't know what is dangling from it, but I love it. Little charms or chimes or whatever they're supposed to be. It's great. Okay, anyway. And they, the lighting effect on the water in here is also really nice. Anyway, now we gotta go to Glimmer. I will, thank you. Wait, what else am I missing? Oh, tall grass. See, this is my big complaint about the backtracking, especially for this one. There is no difference between this challenge and the one outside. Like, you're not actually missing out on anything by not coming back here. So the incentive to finish this challenge just is non-existent. And sure, you don't know that your first time through, but like, it makes it super not worth it on any subsequent playthrough if you're not doing a completionist run. And this got mixed in with baseballs, so it's not worthwhile. And that's Glimmer complete. Now we need to go deal with the Shredder on Sunny Beach. I forgot this place has one of these cutscenes. Alright. Some quick gems. Can I just not bring the turtles? Heck yes. That's still a... okay. Hello, young one. There's a chef. I know, I know. 
Tonight I dine on turtle soup. Your turtle friends will make a very good soup. If I can catch them, you can try to save them if you like. But I'm feeling awfully hungry. I remember this challenge being a bit of a pain in the original because the camera would zoom way out and above you. And it was... I don't think you could change the angle. And it was just a bit hard to control and see where everyone was. I very appreciate the remake just having it be normal freeform camera. So you saved a few turtles. There are more where those came from. Here, take this off and go away. These turtles have just the worst sense of self-preservation. Literally running right towards the pot. There you go. Also in the original, the uh, chef would ring his little triangle to call out the turtles, and he's not doing it in the remake. Ooh. The middle pipe is always the most difficult. Man, there's way more turtles in the second wave. Ironically, Chef counts as one of the few NPCs to treat it as a reward because the first time it's a bribe and the second time it was supposed to be currency. So he recognizes the value of the orbs. Ooh, what am I missing? Over here. Am I missing? Oh, that's fair. That's easy to miss. But yay, we've polished off Sunny Beach. Just trying to be a nice guy, trying to let you go. Alright, and there we have it. We polished off Summer Forest and made our way through... Well, we cleaned out the... In Autumn Plains Homeworld, and we finished up the backtracking that we needed to take care of. So now, next time we can just focus on the pl the portals for Autumn Plains. And there's some really fun ones, and there's some ones that kind of annoy me, but for the most part, strong level, and I'm really excited to get into that next time. But until then, thank you for joining me today. I know you're spoiled for choice when it comes to content on the internet, and I'm honored you chose to spend your time with me. So until next time... Goodbye, and take care.